For those of you who may not have noticed me running around the last four days, I'm a jelly donut, aka Josh Woody, whichever you prefer. And I'll be talking about the history of automatic mod installation, not necessarily just with respect to PHPBB. We'll talk a little bit about the GNU patch and diff utilities, then we'll move into the actual PHPBB arena with uh, easy mod and then auto mod and what's coming for 3.1. The thing about GNU diff is that it's old. It's older than, in fact, a wild Yuri. Yes, I said that. The patch utility actually didn't come until about 10 years later, which I thought was interesting. We do use diff and patch essentially in a PHP form for the automatic updater. I'm not a huge fan of that because I think that mod X is a better format, but that's kind of my opinion because I like Smithy. Where's Smithy? <laughs> kind of have uh, spent a lot of time working on mod X and think it's, it's an all right format at least. The other thing about diff and patch is that they are kind of difficult to create in Win32. And unless you uh, go and install Unix utils or Cygwin or whatever, or SVN, yes, indeed. Winmerge? Uh, I don't remember. I've had trouble making patches since I started trying to make patches. Okay, so Winmerge also. All right, when Merge makes patches. I wasn't aware of that because apparently I don't use it. <laughs> uh, Gordon was telling me, sitting in the back, was telling me that he was at another conference and the, he, the topic came up why PHPBB didn't use diff and patch. While it could be completely functional, there's several things that are offered by Mod X and the Mod Text template before it that kind of have become important. The metadata, for example, the mod author, the author's email, author's website, were theoretically helping people to get support. Because a patch, if you just you know, look at a patch file, it's useless without some kind of metadata. Uh, assuming that you want to do more with it than, than just apply it and forget about it. Also, the new file copies are helpful. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I, I realize that you can you can include new files in a patch. It's just different than actually copying a file. And then we have a database that we have to alter in addition to the actual file changes. So we have to cope somehow with the number of uh, database changes or uh, chmod or what have you. Additionally, uh, whenever this was first conceived, people thought that mods, hacks, should be processed by hand. And so we've, kind of, we've come up with that idea, and you can't really do that with a patch because of all the leading uh, information, the minus, plus, and the exclamation mark for uh, removed, added, and changed lines. So we moved to EasyMod in 2002, 2003. That was a parser for the mod text template originally in PHP BB2. It was written originally by Nutsy99, and then Jim took it over, Terra Frost in the back again. It was very good at what it did. It performed mod file changes well, but it didn't do much more. If you had, say, three or four styles installed on your site, Auto Mod, or excuse me, Easy Mod would struggle to help you with that. Because if I remember right, the workaround we came up with an Easy Mod support was to install the mod four times, each time changing one of your styles and calling it subsilver, for, and then changing it back, which, as you can understand, was a hassle. So let's just take a look at a standard mod installation for EasyMod 0.4.0, the last version that was released in, what, what, what did that been, 2007, 2008? No, you have no idea. No, it supported Mod X. Yes, it supported Mod X, that's right. So we installed the April Fools mod that Nils wrote in, oh goodness, I have no idea when he wrote this mod. I love that. <laughs> and it just pops out a list of, here's what we did, here's what we're going to do, and uh, I was able to do everything correctly. 
and gives you a third status page, tells you that backups were made and actual files were changed, and you're done. There were no options to speak of in easy mod. The main support questions that we had revolved around initial setup and also around things like custom styles and translations that people wanted to process but were un unable to do because easy mod just didn't support that. And yes, I made a pun about the Jackson 5. So we moved to Mod X in, a sense, in essence because the text template became somewhat limiting. It, as the slide says, it was a verbose patch that had a little bit of metadata. It had the author name and, and uh, website and URL, and it was very specific. You had to have so many spaces, or you had to have, I believe, one space between each of the tokens and... It was to yes, that too. Uh, David Smith says that it was difficult to administer because of, of how, how the, uh, just how the format was. And let's say you wanted to create a mod that was provided, say you're a Danish mod author and you wanted to provide English and Danish instructions for your mod. That wasn't supported by the text template natively. So we, we moved to Mod X uh, 2006, that was. And the first thing to really support AutoMod or to support Mod X was AutoMod. Uh, as we said a minute ago, uh, the last version of EasyMod did support Mod X, but it didn't really um, support it in any full way. It supported it basically as just a straight replacement for the text template. The Mod X allowed e AutoMod to add some new features that weren't possible in EasyMod. Some of them just weren't quite so easy to find. And AutoMod has some problems with languages still. And also, there's an open bug in the tracker uh, about being able to uninstall a contribution, which is like a sub mod, a small portion, an extra feature usually in a mod. So let's do the same thing that we did with EasyMod. Let's just do it now with the current version of AutoMod, 1.0.0. This is, uh, I believe, Knox Wizard's Easy Portal for PHP BB3. It does pretty much the same thing as, uh, e as, as EasyMod did. It shows you what it's going to do. It shows you that it actually was able to do it. And then let's say that I want to go and install it on a different template. Well, you have to go to a different page. This is not, not part of the wizard. You have to back out and go back in, find this box at the very bottom, tell it what you want to apply to what template, go. And it'll go through the same thing again a second time with here's what we're going to do, here's what we did, it's done, hurrah. And you have to do that one time for every single style that you have installed. That is not available for languages, which now seems like an obvious oversight, but it didn't seem obvious at the time. And uh, we found out on the automated support forum that this just wasn't intuitive. So we move on to the next edition, which is going to be included in ASCRES, PHP BB 3.1. We have the goals to fix the user interface. That is probably the number one thing to handle. Also to address the things I just mentioned that you can't do with AutoMod that are completely supported by ModX. And also, this is what Igor has been harping on, make the code a little more flexible. Uh, Igor decides that it's a good idea to install his mods on the command line. And so, <laughs> yes indeed, that takes, takes quite a man. So that's one of the things that we're gonna try and do. We're gonna try and move some of the dependencies away since it's gonna be a mostly new code. As we go through the uh, ASCREAS installer, there's no screenshots to show you or anything yet. I've done some back-end work. I've rewritten the ModX parser to use the PHP Simple XML, which is actually pretty nice. It has actually support for XPath, which is new to PHP 5. That's why it wasn't used in the original AutoMod. But there's nothing really to show you as far as a user interface that you would appreciate. 
the interface plans essentially are to move to a wizard install, which I'm going to give you a concept here in a minute. And the goal is to give the user all the relevant prompts before he installs the mod. This, of course, allows better, uh, better usability because they don't have to, it, they're given the prompt first. They don't have to go into some obscure box or some obscure page and look for a box at the very bottom. So here's how we might install Richard McGurry's beer mod. <laughs> yeah, it's Budweiser beer. <laughs> All right, so it won't be a Budweiser mod. We'll get that. We have the we have basically just three three uh, sections that would be given to the user before he actually does any file changes or database changes or really he just installs the mod. You have to tell it how to process the styles. Most of this can be calculated beforehand, but to confirm it with the user, that probably seems like a good idea. Also, to be able to do like what I mentioned er earlier with the uh, easy portal, to be able to apply mod, uh, st changes to styles that are similar but not identical. Um, like the example I used before was Subsilver 2 and Fi Subice 2, which is a new image set and a new theme uh, CSS on Subsilver 2. And also, one thing that is not supported at all by AutoMod now is whether is upgrading mods. Again, that seems obvious. I, I had an idea in mind when I created AutoMod that people would just overwrite the old mod files with the new mod files, and it would AutoMod would understand that. But uh, people don't understand that. <laughs> so that will uh, be changed to uh, basically allow mods to inherit from, well, not to inherit, but to be children of each other. So you, you install the Easy Portal mod, and then you install the upgrade from Easy Portal 1.0 to 1.1. And AutoMod actually knows what you mean. And uh, some MS Paint work, just for Paul. Now, did you say just tell it to force English on all languages? Yes, that is one thing that is coming and is sorely needed. Uh, Jeremy asked, if we were going to be able to force English to all the languages that are installed on the board. Yes. Because what happens is, of course, not all mod authors um, know all languages. Does anybody here know all languages? Anybody? <laughs> Yuri? OK. A couple of you. Bertie? All right. Bertie knows all languages. I'll have to get him to talk later. 